Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is a big tutorial. This is a two day long <laughs> tutorial. Well, it's compressed down for you guys, but this has taken me and is still ongoing. Um, and this is a mini album. Now, this is a gift for somebody later on this year, but I am being super organized because I am waiting for the photos to arrive that I plan to put in this, ready to give to that person. So there are some bits that aren't finished because I need the photos for it and I don't want to share those pictures to everybody, which I hope you all understand. But the basics and how I put together my mini albums, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So I love doing mini albums, it's something again that I've done, but I just, I'm starting to share other paper crafts that I also enjoy doing on my channel because I've had a lot of people ask me about mini albums and how I do mine. So this one I thought I'd share. Now I have been following lots of people on YouTube and I get inspiration from many people so some of the people which I will list these all in my blog and I think you should go check out as well but you've got Your Book of Memories, Scrap Queen, Genevieve Designs, Corinne's Creations, Kathy Auto King and Papercraft with Friends Forever. Those channels all have so much good information and the inspiration is amazing. So this is my take and how I've put it together. My size of my mini album is five and a half by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. So a five and a half by seven and a half album. What we're going to make today, it's a long tutorial. Hopefully you're not fed up with my voice already. <laughs> but if you enjoy my tutorials and you like watching me, then I'm sure you will enjoy this. It's something different and let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, you need your chipboard. So this album is gonna be using five by seven pages. So um, I'm making it slightly bigger. So I've got five and a half by seven and a half. So you'll need, yeah, five and a half by seven and a half. You'll need two pieces of your chipboard, five and a half by seven and a half. Um, this is just from the backing from my paper packs. So some of the stamping up um, paper packs, um, the backs of all my first edition paper packs, cereal boxes. If you use a cereal box, I would recommend using two and stick them together first with the, whatever the logo, the print, you know, of the box. So you've got the raw cardboard facing out on both sides because you'll need, they're quite thin. This one here, um, let's have a look, is, I think it's two, yeah, it's two millimeters. I think your cereal box is a one mil. So um, yeah, it's a really nice, strong one. So two pieces of five and a half by seven and a half. And then this piece here is gonna be my spine and this is three by seven and a half. Now I'm hoping, well, I know I'm gonna get, I want five pages. So we'll be making the hinges um, later. So get those two, um, those pieces re um, ready. And what I would also say is I have a, um, a blunt, um, a little, 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 little trimmer blade that I use when I cut my chipboard. So I just take this out and I've just got a mark on it with black. So it's basically, there's my perfect one which I've just taken out when I cut these. Um, but you just, by using that, it will still cut through perfectly, but it won't ruin your nice, it won't blunt out your, um, your newer blades. So keep your old ones because they're perfect for cutting the real thick chipboard. Okay, so, got those ready and then I'm using obviously the freshly cut flowers so I always keep my collections that I'm currently working on together because sometimes if you take the die cuts out and they're all kind of floating around um, it's handy to keep them all together so this is the 48 um, pack um, A4 ultimate die cut I'm going to be using a lot of this in this album because it's just it's I mean look, it's got ready-made envelopes bows, trims, the vellum I'm going to be using between my pages, borders there, so literally it's just going to make this so much easier. But it also has A4 papers at the back. Stickers there for your letters, so I've gone ahead and I've chosen what I want to have for my front and back. And I have these gorgeous ones here, so I'm going to have the yellow on my spine, and then the front and the back is going to have this and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And once I add and all those lovely other bits to it, and I'm gonna be pulling out the orange, so I think that's gonna look really nice having orange bits on the spine there. So yeah, it should look gorgeous. So what you want to do first of all, is what I plan to do is I'm gonna stick like so, cut this down, so that go in the middle, and then this one here. 
is going to go over the end there. So first of all, if you pop double-sided tape, so I'm going to be using red tape for this because it is super, super strong, and I'll be using a little bit of wet glue just over the top just to give it that extra, um, extra something just so it's nice and secure. So I'm just going to run my tape all the way around the edges. Okay, so just go and do that on all of your three pieces there. Okay, so I've just popped my red tape on these three pieces and I'm going to be adding glue on top as well. So it gives you that wiggle room plus that, just that extra um, strength as well. Then what I've done is I've cut down, so this piece here is what's going to be going on my spine and this piece measures five and a half by seven and a half. Um, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. I thought so. Five and a half by nine and a half. And then these two pieces here are six and a half by nine and a half. These are the bits we're going to stick first. Okay, so a bit different to some of the others out there because I want three different pieces on the back. So I'm flipping these over. And basically, you want to stick, if you've got, a, if you've got one that's different, um, so you've got one that's your front and one that's your back. Um, obviously, they're, mine are both the same, so it doesn't matter, so front and back. What you're gonna do is, on the front one, is we're gonna stick this, but we're gonna hog the right-hand side. So we're gonna stick it like so, okay? And you wanna make sure that you've got a one inch, one inch, and one inch on, e on, e on all three sides. And then this one, you're gonna hog to the left-hand side Again, making sure you've got one inch, one inch, one inch. Don't matter if it's a little bit off, you can eyeball this, it doesn't have to be, but it does need to be straight. So I'm using my grid here, so I'm lining up my actual paper there, and then I can line that up, because I know that each of these for me is half an inch, so there's my one inch, and then I've got my one inch there. And again, with this piece, like so. So I can see there that they're nicely lined up. So I'll do this one first of all with you. Um, so you just want to remove my pokey tool here, just remove all the backing, okay, and then I'm also going to use my Tombow, paper friendly, very strong, and I'm going to go over all of my double tape there, and then I'm going to fill the gaps, so basically just cover it all. Like I said, this is just giving more strength, and you don't need to use your double-sided tape over every surface that way as well so like so make sure whatever your paper is that you've got is facing the right way yeah get that all nice and lined up again and like I said I'm just gonna hog this to the right hand side and stick that one down and then just grab your bone folder again and just go over really make sure it's all stuck down. When you stick your red tape down or any strong double-sided tape, also go over it with your bone folder. Make sure you've got all the air, pop, air bubbles out and there's no um, white dots. You should get rid of all of them. So just go around and make sure it's all stuck down. And then flip it over and again, just carefully, you don't want to damage your image. I'm just going to go over that with my fingers. And make sure that's all nicely stuck down like so okay so do that again with this one okay so that's those two pieces stuck down now with your spine just get rid of all my bits there just pop that to one side so this piece here you're going to stick right in the middle so again just going to line it up on my grid there and you want to pop it in the middle. So basically you should have one inch from the top and the bottom. So I'm just lining mine up there. And then one and a quarter inch on the left and the right. And that quarter of an inch is just going to give us that bend room. So when we bend our album round, because we've got this two mil chipboard, it will give us that room and it won't, it will um, reduce the risk of your paper cracking and pressure and tension on that, that paper. So this needs to stick as central as possible. So again, just stick that down. Okay, so that's all stuck down, and now what we're going to do is we're going to be sticking this over the top, giving ourselves this quarter of an inch gap. 
to there and then that one's going to stick over like so. And basically the look that's giving is that we get that on the side of our album because I like that one inch kind of, um, looks like a book. So all you've got to do here is make sure you've got the same gap here and here which is about that quarter of an inch and then make sure your paper is all lined up top and bottom. So now it just becomes one big sheet. Okay, so what you want to do is pop glue along here. Okay, and then just do, I'm going to pop a bit more glue right into the section there, just on that, because that's where you're going to have tension. A lot of people use Tyvek, I don't have any. That's just a non rip fabric, so it's perfect for spines. But if you add a good glue, it will still give it that elasticity and it will help stop it from cracking. Or well, just ripping over time, because obviously, you know, you're going to have these hopefully for years. So just make sure that gets really stuck down there. I'll just rub my finger through that bit. This is all going to be covered again, so. This is kind of all of your groundwork. Okay, so that's one piece in place. And then this one here, again, I'm just going to splodge some glue right into that bit there. And this is going to be heavily embellished and decorated. So again, a lot of my front cover and spine is going to disappear. So again... You want to make sure that your card is lined up. Don't worry if the paper's slightly out. See, I'm slightly, slightly up a bit there. Don't worry about that. The most important bit is making sure your chipboard is all in place. Okay, so next what we want to do is start folding all of our sides. So first of all, you want to do all of your corners. Now, the best way to do this is I just add some glue in like a square. So one inch kind of square, like so, okay and just fold that across so then you create another square as straight as you can get it like so okay then what you want to do is with your bone folders just go and work those corners Okay, and the glue from there is splodging into these little triangle bits either side now, so it's sticking them down as well. Okay, so go and do that on all four corners. So, again, just glue, go over a little bit there as well, and just bring it in so it creates another nice square. You want to get your it up to the corner as much as possible. Keeping it all nice and straight. And by doing this, it's going to give us a really nice corner when we fold it all in and it will all be nicely concealed. Okay, so if I just bring that up there, you can see what I've done. So I've just pushed the paper around the edge there. You want this to be a nice square as well, like that one there. And then when we fold in these sides, you're not going to see any of the card underneath. So just repeat that on the other two corners. Okay, so that's my four corners done. And then we want to fold all of the sides in. So I'll start with this one first. So again, I'm just using my wet glue and just cover and make sure you get right into the sides there as well. And then just fold this one in. And I'll do this end here as well. I'm going to apply more pressure to it all in a minute. I'm just going to tack it all down first. Okay, and then just go back over them and just spread out all that glue. Okay, and then do the same along your large side. So again, glue right the way down. You'll need to run a little bit of glue just underneath here. because obviously that's where we've stuck it over. So just a little bit there. And then lift up the middle and then just bring up all your sides. Okay, so as your glue's drying, just work in your kind of spine here, the, the edges, 
just to make sure that really sits in there, your paper's fallen into the, the gaps. And you can see now when it folds up, it folds up perfectly. There's, there shouldn't be any tension on your card or your paper. And you can see now how that's all coming together. And then we'll get that all decorated. Obviously fill it all up. This is all going to be covered. So just go around. I'm using my Teflon bone folder here just to just go around there and just make sure everything is stuck down. You should have really nice corners that are completely enclosed. Okay, so next we need to cover the insides. I've just gone around with my um, a, a glue eraser just to get rid of any stickiness that may have been around here. It's a bit tacky there in the middle, but that doesn't matter. It's all going to get covered. Here comes the sun again. Always when I'm going to record, right across my uh, thing there. Okay, so you need a piece of... Um, this is two and three quarters by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You need one piece, then you need two pieces of six by seven. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to stick this one in here and you should have a quarter of an inch top and bottom. You want a colour that's going to kind of obviously complement um, what it is that you're using. Um, and again, I'm just going to grab my glue. Um, do I want to use my glue or double-sided tape? I'm going to use my double-sided tape. I'm going to use my my scotch tape here which is my other favourite one to use so I'm just going to run it all the way through the middle here and get that one stuck down okay I've just popped my tape on and again just along the edges I'm just applying some of my wet glue just to kind of fill in any of the bits there and just to make sure it's all obviously stuck down and then like I said line it up in the middle start from the bottom a quarter of an inch up, nice and centred, and again it will match up there. And then you want to do the same with these, and these are going to go over the top, like so, it will match up. This join is going to be completely covered, okay, so you don't need to worry that, about that. But again, just make sure that they stick over the top, bring this one down here, over the top there, and again line it up you want to make sure it lines up with this give yourself an even border like so okay so you can see what I get there okay so get them stuck down and then as it's sticking I'll come back at that point but you need to start working it into that crease there just so that obviously this all closes up nicely okay and again there I'm just using my bone folder and really work in and form that crease there and just start to slide slowly slowly <laughs> just bring it around and again just keep marking it until you get a nice but do it slowly it shouldn't crack at all so because you've given that yourself that gap and again just using my bone folder here just to get all that glue really spread out The Teflon bone folders are a good investment, pricey but a good investment because you get this nice flat side as well which is handy. Here comes that sun again. <laughs> okay so do the same on this side. So again I'm just going to stick this all down. Okay and then just make sure you've worked in those score lines there so that then you can bring it all around and it, you'll get a nice fold. And there is the case I guess, the outside of the, the mini album. So it's really straightforward you just got to do it in stages and um, take your time with it. So now we need to do the insides and all of the pages. Okay, so now we're going to make the piece to stick in the middle of our album to attach all our pages. So this piece is seven and a half by seven. And you want it so that it's going to... So this is the seven, which is the same width of the yellow that I put down earlier. So this is the piece that's going to cover this middle three inch section here. Now, if you're worried, if you're maybe slightly off here, or you, you know, you you just want to be able to maybe hide a few things that we don't like as crafters, we pick up our flaws, don't we? Um, then maybe use the same colour. So use the yellow again for an example. But I'm using the white just as a bit of a contrast. You will only see the middle sections. You won't see the outer parts. So what you want to do is along the seven and a half inch size, you want to score at every half an inch. Okay. So half an inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, and seven. 
then flip it and do the exact same score lines again over. Basically, we just want to really squash all those fibres down because these are going to be the bits that kind of, um, the hinges, so they're going to be moving from side to side all the time. So just by doing it on both sides, it will just help um, eliminate any cracking. So now what you want to do is the two end pieces are going to be on their own. They're just going to be kind of flapping um, and will be singular. All the rest, we're going to be, every other one, sorry, We'll, when we fold it together they're going to be stuck together so let me explain you're going to fold up your outer ones okay so fold it up then so basically now we just turn it over then the next one's going to go so hang on a minute I'm trying if I do it and then explain it it'd be a bit better so what you want to create is this Okay, so the first one is singular and on its own. The second one is going to be flat and this is going to stick down onto our spine. The next two are forming a triangle together and we're going to stick in there, okay? So we're creating that. So this one on its own, but these two are together. Then this one's going to be flat again, okay? So the next one, you're going to fold up and create another triangle. So again, let me just do that and bring it in. So you can see now, so we've got the first one on its own here, then this flat one, then two that are stuck together, then another flat one, and then two that are gonna stick together again. So we're starting to create this effect here. So again, the next one is gonna be flat, so we miss it, and then we go on to the next ones. So fold up, fold down. So again, so every other, so the first one's on its own, flat, then a triangle, flat, then you want to make a triangle, then flat, then make another triangle, then flat. So every other is flat. And basically at the end, you should end up with one on its own again so and these will be our five pages so each one of these so I've got one page is going to attach here another page is going to attach when these two are stuck together another page here another page here another page here and then that last one needs to fold up for our last page so one two three four five six pages oh there you go made an extra one which is fine so we've got six pages that are going to go into this. Now once that's all squashed down, it will fit within this section here, like so. And it will come in just under three inches, which is what we want, okay? The reason we've got the half inch flat piece is that allows for all the bulk, all the pictures, all the little pockets, all those bits and pieces that we're going to add to it by having that um, gap between our pages makes a big difference. So what you want to do now is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to I'm going to put a cross on every one that you need to add glue to and I think this will help you with your folding. So you can maybe do this bit first um, and then you'll know what bits and what which way to fold. So this one is on its own so um, we'll just leave that one blank. This is flat so flat flat so flat then miss two flat miss two flat miss two flat miss two flat okay so all the ones that have got the F on you don't need to stick well we will stick eventually but at this point right now we don't need to stick all we need to add our tape to is the one inch so the two half inch pieces in between each of those flat pieces so flat and then I'm going to do cross, 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 cross. Again, if I just bring that up. So I've put nothing on my two outer single pieces. Then you will have a flat on each outer bit and then coming in you'll have your crosses, two crosses and one flat, two crosses and a flat. Okay, if I hold that there just to freeze frame it, hopefully I've explained that and it makes sense. Now if I stick it, hopefully again that will allow you to really understand what it is that we're doing. And um, as always, I always say watch the tutorial through full because it does really, really help. <laughs>
Um, I get a lot of people saying, oh, I wish I'd watched it till the end. I, I, I rushed ahead. Um, and, uh, gosh, I've got these. Oh, these have gone really yucky. I shouldn't have used those scissors. Let's start again. should be using my crappy ones. Okay. Yeah, so do, do watch it till the end. So on one of the two X's, you don't need to put it on both. So just to the left, the left hand one, I'm going to pop my adhesive on. Um, just trim it off. And this makes a concealed hinge. So you will not see where our pages, how our pages attach. Uh, and then that one. Okay, so once again, just go and make sure well, you've got all your air bubbles out from your red tape or double sided tape or wet glue. It's entirely up to you how you want to stick it down. As long as it's something really strong, you want this to last forever. Okay, and then take off the adhesive. I'm also going to run a little bit more glue over the top for good measure and then basically you want to just sandwich them together okay and then again with my bone folder don't worry if you do get some cracking it's all going to get covered because we have folded these all different ways again do not worry about that so now you will see I've got my first two hinges this one the singular one because it's the outer one and then the two together okay and you can't see all you can see now is the two F's together which is what you want so we're going to make these X's disappear by sticking them together and then the F's will line up so again that's another good way to know that you're doing it right so I do recommend that you write on the backs of them as I did there because I think it will really help you so again splodge some glue and just squeeze those together and just work your way along doing exactly that until you've just got all of the F letters facing facing you, okay? Okay, so now I have that facing me with these two singular ones and now I have this. And basically, if I bring this in, that is going to stick perfectly within there, okay? Top to bottom, all covered. And then you want to have a quarter of an inch on both sides here. So a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here. And that is going to get stuck down inside our album. Okay, so next you want to add tape all along the back across all the F. Do not um, stick it on your outer ones. It's just on the flat pieces here where we've wrote those letters. So again, I'm just using my half inch not half inch actually this one is three eighths of an inch red tape so I'm just going to go along and I'm also going to put wet glue in fact if you fold it down flat then it's easier to attach your adhesive okay peel off all of the backing and cover it with wet glue because it will give you that wiggle room because you don't want to get to this point and this gets stuck down slightly crooked or wonky and then you're really unhappy with it and you end up throwing it all away. <laughs> we don't want you doing that. So I'm going to get my glue and just cover all of it. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. And then just get rid of my scoreboard. Again, make sure, oh it doesn't really matter if it's upside down because this, this really doesn't matter which way up, but I am going to make sure I keep Keep it in the right orientation. Okay, keep your ends facing up, okay? And just focus, I would say, getting the top perfect. Getting that all nicely lined up. You can always kind of hide the bottom. Hover it over, carefully pop it down so you've got it as equal as you can, left and right. The main thing is to get it straight. Don't worry if it's slightly more to the left or slightly more to the right. It's not the end of the world, but do try and make sure you get a little quarter of an inch. And then just kind of start to tuck it down and then you can go for it and 
use your bone folder just to really work those score lines back in because we're going to be obviously folding this both ways and just go along each one folding it both ways just to really kind of let it find its like new home how it's going to sit each time and it will start to fold into place and just push all that glue out again really working it all in and by adding that glue it certainly helped because it does give you that little bit of time just to get it all in place okay so that is now what you should have so we can see we've got this really nice hinge inside don't worry if you've got a little bit showing a tiny bit I've got a little bit coming there because the pages are slightly taller so again it's going to cover a lot of this anyway they're not taller than the obviously the actual mini album itself but they are going to come up over the edges there so do not worry but just keep working that in until it's really dry this is your time now to make sure that you're really happy with it and you want them to move nice and freely each way okay okay so next we need to make all of our pockets so you are going to need six pieces of eight and a quarter by five six pieces of five by seven and a quarter and then this is optional the vellum i did use it in my scrapbook um, photo album which i done last year um, it stops your photos sticking together so when your pages are together like so it will stop those sticking together so these are seven and a quarter by five and three quarters okay like i said the vellum everything i'm using is from that um do crafts uh dye thing whatever whatever <laughs> i forgot what it was bring it in here from this do crafts paper mania, mania freshly cut flowers so it's the matching vellum um but any vellum will work obviously okay so with the vellum you want to score along the five and three quarters of an inch side you want to score at half an inch okay just like so and then the, that piece we're keeping plain and then this piece here so your five by eight and a quarter along the eight and a quarter inch side you want to score at half an inch and at seven and three quarters okay so do that on all of those pieces like i said you will have six of everything and then we're going to burnish all of these score lines so just do those two and these are forming our pockets so that we've got our little um, mats that we're going to pull out from inside so you've got plenty of room for all your photos and then we just want to fold the vellum over and burnish like so okay so we'll start with the vellum first on the inner side, so vellum, if you've got patterned and coloured like mine, it's brighter on one side and it's duller. On the dull side, you want to run your tape along like so. And then just, just take a little wedge off of each corner there. And then with this piece that we folded the two sides in, you're going to pop tape on these two tabs. Okay, and then with the vellum, take off your backing and with the tabs facing up here on this piece, you're going to stick this and just line up your score line on your vellum with the bottom of that piece of card. Okay, and then again, run over with your bone folder, make sure you get well, all the air bubbles. Okay, and then fold that piece around and we can burnish it again in a minute but you should have a little quarter of an inch overhang which is what we want and then with this piece here take off your two sides and then this is the outer part so this is um, this side here is what's going to be stuck against the hinges this is the outside part so what I would say is you is make sure that that piece is the neatest because if, if you're a bit crooked with sticking this down, you can hide anything that's on this the, to the, the bottom part. So this is my bottom part here. So stick it down so it's all nice and flush. And again, I'm focusing on lining up my top. Don't, you know, don't look to the bottom. If you use a poker tool to keep it flat, 
and it's easier then. Make sure that's lined up. If you're slightly out on the bottom, like there, it's not even a millimetre, but it's such the tiniest amount, you're not going to see that. But at least this is all nice and neat for the front. So that is what you will have. So this is the vellum covering, protecting whatever pictures you have on this mat against the pictures that will be, so for example, this is our other page, that will be on the other hinge. So when that closes, those pictures will not touch each other because they have that vellum in the middle. Okay, so you should now have six. So I've already done all mine. I've got all different vellums. So I've done a pattern. So I've got that one and then that one and then two of that one then that one and then finish with that one again so they all match and what is going to happen is these are like this at the minute but we're going to stick run tape on our tabs on the hinges there sorry and these are then going to be sandwiched and stuck at the bottom so you've still got this pocket which is going to have a mat in it and you will then have that completely flush with the bottom there you see how neat that looks as a page but we want to do all of our decoration. It's entirely up to you. You can attach your pages before. I prefer decorating and doing all my bits on my pages and then attaching it into the album itself. Okay, so. Okay, so I just went ahead, chatting away, hammering away and realized I didn't record any of me sticking my beautiful corner protectors on <laughs> so they are pretty self-explanatory but I will share the links to where I buy these but they are beautiful um, really nice gold ones they have teeth on the inside basically you just pop them into the corner butt them right up squeeze them into place they are flexible enough to be able to squeeze into place and then with a bit of tissue you can use pliers I prefer a hammer and literally just cover it in tissue and just hammer lift it up hammer and go around and check it's all in place and just do that on all four corners so they are very easy to pop in you can get smaller ones I want went for something quite big on this one but it just now is another way to not only make it look even more special and professional but also to protect this and make it last forever you are really gonna have to rip this apart to to ruin it you know and for it to fall apart it's not going anywhere so that's where we are now so let's get on and start decorating all of our pages you need to attach your mats onto these. So these pieces here measure four and three quarters by seven and you'll need 12 pieces. Now I've got all different um, colors, all from that same pack. So everything matches, so I've got green and a yellow there. I've got the green and the yellow, I've got yellow and this bluey color and that one there. And then this one, I've just got this floral one that I pulled out, which matches the vellum. So I'm just going to go ahead and get those two stuck down. If you want to round off your edges, you can. I'm doing it on the little pockets, on the, um, the mats that are inside the pockets, but I'm not doing it on these ones. But just go over and get these stuck down. Okay, so they're now stuck down. So that is, you should now have six of these. Okay, so that's all your pockets with their mats on. And then for the mats and, the, well, yeah, the mats <laughs> that are going to be inside the pockets, I've already done all of these ones here. And basically you're going to need six pieces of four and three quarters by seven, which is the white outer piece there. And then if you want to mat and layer again on top, like I've done, you will need uh, 12 pieces because obviously these are going to be on both sides. So 12 pieces of four and three quarters by six and three quarters, and then 12 pieces of four by six and a quarter. All right, so there's lots there. You may just want to do the pattern directly onto the white, and in that case then you only need six pieces of the, um, sorry, 12 pieces of the four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Okay, so get all them ready and you will have six of them and they are all ready now to go inside each of our pockets once they are attached. I'm not putting anything more on these and keeping them completely flat. They're ready for you to put your photo on or to put a journaling card on um, and that's it and keep them quite thin because we're going to be adding more bulk onto these with little envelopes and pockets and tags and stuff like that. So keep these nice and flat um, is my advice um, just so that you keep the overall bulk of the album to a minimum really because it is going to be quite thick. Okay. Okay, so I've just been going through all like the decoupage stuff that I've got and I've started making a few things up. So this is one of the decoupage pieces that you get amongst all of this um, 
A4 sheets, um, some of its decoupage, some of its tags, some of its, like I said, banners, it's all kinds of things. So I've just put that one together. And then what I've done is I've stuck some tape just to the left, uh, the right hand side in the corner. And I'm gonna stick this down in here. Um, and pop it right down into the corner there just giving a little bit of a border, the same border that I've got with the white and the matte there, I'm just doing like so. And then I've just cut, I've got these tag dies in all different sizes, so I've just cut some tags down and they are going to sit inside this pocket now that I've created like so. So again, perfect now to put some little photos in, you could again do some journaling on it, you can um, obviously map um, the back side or put more pictures on it. I'm going to hole punch them, put some ribbon in and then I'm going to add some little sequins and bits and pieces but just for the basis that's how I'm for example putting together one of my pages and like I said because we've now put all of that dimension in there because we've got that um, half inch um, gap on our uh, hinges this will you know it's not going to you know cause too much um, of an issue as when we go to close it all it should all sit nicely so now I can do something on this side and uh, yeah so I might recreate that on a couple of pages I'm going to do some simple pockets um, and um, and yeah I'll keep showing you what I'm doing okay so I'm going to make a pocket for this next one and this will be four by five Along the four inch side you want to score at half an inch and then along the five inch side you want to score at a quarter of an inch and then four and three quarters of an inch. And then if I flip it over you can see there where it's crossed over. You just want to cut across like so and that one. Burnish all of those score lines and then we're going to attach some adhesive to the backs there and then this one is going to stick inside that page like so and that's going to be another pocket to put another mat in for more photos so that's that side I've just finished these with a little eyelet on there and some ribbon okay so there one those are all done like I said all the little sequins and stuff I'll do at the very very end um, but now I'm just going to get this one stuck down Okay, my little um, mat that's going to go in there is five and a quarter by, sorry, I'm doing the wrong number, five and a quarter by four and a quarter. It was just some rough um, scrap card I had lying around, so I didn't want to um, kind of dip into anything else. So, yeah, it just sits in there nicely, but I think I'm going to do a bigger one behind it as well. So I'm just talking you through just all these little kind of measurements and stuff just to help you along. And obviously you can now layer that up with a pattern paper of your choice. Um, I'm going to decorate the front of this pocket, um, but I'm giving you all the basic measurements and the rest of it hopefully you can just develop and, um, and add more to yourself. Okay, to get the pockets stuck down, because I've done that one, kind of, but I, can, I just want to get just show you really how to stick them in. Um, this one I've already put down, I haven't decorated yet, but I can do that. I'm, I'm happy to do that while it's stuck down, but I think it is better to do them when they're not. So, get them all done. For example like I've done here and then on all your hinges you want to go along and you want to pop some double-sided a good strong double-sided tape so I'm using my red tape here and you just want to it's a half inch tape that I've got run it along one side like so and then fold it over and run it along the other side okay so both sides of that one hinge you want to have red tape on Okay, now go ahead and do them all, I guess, um, you know, while you're there, won't hurt. Go over them with your bone folder, as always, make sure all the air bubbles are out. And it's all nicely stuck down. And then peel off both sides. Now, I've already stuck down the first one, so I'm going to use that as my gauge. But this will be your first one you're sticking in. You want to make sure, because it's slight, the pocket is slightly bigger than the hinge itself. So just make sure that you've got it hanging over evenly. If you would rather, you could butt it up to one end, so for example, the bottom. When you put it over, so if I put it over one that I've not put the tape on, so open up your pocket, okay, make sure it's the, the end that the vellum's um, stuck down to is the end that you're sticking in. Stick it over the hinge, and you'll see it can move up and down. So either line it up, 
so you've got an even amount overhanging or butt it right up in this case to the bottom okay and then stick it and then you'll know then that all of them now it will just skim on the very top of the book itself the, the mini album case so you can do that but you need to make sure it literally is right up to that otherwise just I do it so that I've got an even amount hanging over each side okay and this hinge here so I've stuck my tape on that one there open it up like so and then pop it on hovering it kind of over you've got a bit of wiggle room before you if you as long as you keep it open like that now I'm just lining mine up with the one that I've put in before once you're happy make sure it's flush with the very very bottom and then just stick it down okay I can bring up my other one now and I can see that they are completely lined up with each other okay and my vellum's stuck in there nicely so again any pictures that are on here or any sequins or embellishments nouveau drops things like that are not going to stick to that other page and you can see how much room we've got there because we've got this half inch piece okay so that's two of my pages in there so yeah really easy so just go ahead now and stick all them down and once they're in just kind of move the hinge side to side just making sure your page can obviously turn nice and easily hi everybody so it's now the next day and as you can see i've done a lot <laughs> so this is a big labor of love and like i said at the beginning it is a meaty project but I hope you're enjoying it so far. So I have gone ahead and decorated the front and I've also decided to distress this. The more I looked at it, the more the white, it was just too white and it's just gonna get dirty over years anyway. So I figured I'd dirty it up and help it along. So what I have done is I have distressed all of my edges. Now, if you're gonna distress, I would advise that you do it before um, you stick it all down, okay? So it's best to do it before. However, it does still work this way. But I've literally distressed everything. I'm using the Distress Oxide um, uh, Tim Holtz, the vintage photo. I've gone around all the edges and then on top of that, I have then used my um, metallic rub-ons and I've used this bronzy colour here. I used a bit of the gold as well, but I preferred the bronze. Then on top of that, I have used gold flakes. And I'm going to show you how I've done that later on but basically you just get some Tombow you need a tacky glue don't get a glue that's going to dry completely dry it needs to dry tacky and I just went with my finger and just randomly whacked it on the corners and on the edges and then just laid my gold leaf over and you can see that really cool distressed look that it gives it then on the bind this is again all the bits all the cut aparts um, that you get in that kit in that well, I say kit I guess it is that collection um, and I've used these again I've used all the um, rub-ons and I've used the bow there now I am going to add a, another bit here but I can't do it because it will give away who it's for so the pictures will follow of more detail of this but it won't be for some time yet I'm really planning ahead for this because I want to be organized and I want to make sure I get the right pictures to fill it on the front, this is part of the one of the little cutaways and I've just kind of arched it over, stuck it so it's kind of lifted there. I've got an old key that I found from my stash. There's one of those butterflies I love using, a bow, paper flowers, leaves, just clustered it all together and then I've put Nouveau drops. I'm also going to add sequins to this as well. So that's the front. So, I mean, yeah, you... you there are so many great albums out there and ways to decorate, so, you know, look on Pinterest for inspiration there as well so I'm just going to show you it and it's just glued down it's easy to do then inside I have gone ahead and I've put that foiling all on the inside there which looks awesome but again the middle here is going to be a, a kind of a little bit of a story I'm going to write to this person and again it's, it's quite personal and private so I don't want to share that and I don't want to put it in there yet obviously because it will give it away but that's what I'm using this page for so it's going to be this belongs to and then a little bit about it and, and things like that that was one that I've put in but I'm going to put gold foil on it and it's going to end up looking like where is my other one that I had um, I've got stuff everywhere I think this is probably the messiest my craft room has ever been it's making me a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, I'll have to find that in a minute. I don't know where I've put it. Oh, I think it's further in here, actually. I haven't stuck it yet. But So 
this is going to have more in it so I haven't got to that bit yet. This pocket here, I'm going to tell you now what you need for that one and again I'm still, all the detail and the sequins I'll show you at the end of the tutorial but the basics here, these are little lovely little cards that you get in the kit, again I've distressed them all but on this I'm going to put pictures on the back and I'm going to write a little bit about pictures on the front and I'm going to add a few more in there, probably going to do another mat in there as well but for the pocket you will need a piece of card that is seven and a half by uh, two and a half and along the seven and a half inch side you want to score at half an inch and at seven and then along the long inch, long side, uh, shorter side sorry, you want to then score at half an inch so you've just got a half an inch score line on all three sides fold them in like so might as well quickly do this, after all it is a tutorial and then I just trim off right through the cross there okay and again that one there and then fold it in half and with your distress ink that's when you want to go in and just dirty it all up because obviously I'm going to then stick that other piece over the top so the distressing is completely up to you if you want a nice clean looking album then you know go for it I do prefer a more worn looking album okay so that's just to stress that and then basically for example it will go in and stick in your page like so then the mat to go on top of that is six by two and again just go along and just dirty up the edges there with your distressed ink okay and then you'll stick that on top stick it all down and there is a pocket for you to then add little tags in. Now because I've got these huge mats here on every page, that's where I'm gonna be putting my big pictures. So I know that's already okay. All of these kind of little, the sides of the pages, will also have a few big pictures on, but it's gonna be for little ones. Um, and, uh, and, you know, just little quotes and, and things like that. So now that can stick on there, okay? like so and then that will all stick in there and it will give me that pocket which again I can put another mat in if I do I'll tell you later on in the tutorial otherwise it will have little bits and pieces in it that's another one there I'm going to put some gold foiling on which I'll show you when I get to it and that's going to go in there so that will be the same as that one and I'm going to do tags again because I do like that page I'm going to add some sequins here um, and I'm going to change the ribbon don't like it I thought I did but now I don't then um, Where's that one with the gold on it? Do, 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 do. Here, there we go. So you can see where I've added the gold flakes. So that is the same one here, but look how much nicer it looks with the gold flakes on it. So again, just the Tombow glue, I will show you when I do that one. You just go around just randomly. I'm gonna put a ribbon in there. There's gonna be a ribbon in that one as well. Like all the detail I'll show you at the very end, but I'm just getting all these kind of bits in place. Then what I've also got is all of these envelopes were in the, the set. So again, just go around and just dirty up all of the corners, like so. And then what I've done, because they were actual envelopes, I've cut them just the same to make little pockets. But with these ones, I'm gonna have two, so I'm gonna have two and then another two, like so. Okay, those ones are different sizes, so I'll get two that are the same because there was two different pockets. I think it would be those two, for example. I'll probably put another mat behind it, but they're going to go in there, and then again, it's going to have another tag in there. This might have a little... I've got all these bits here that I've cut away from that kit. Um, so again, I've got loads and loads of ideas for it. But if you want to do those little pockets, then you are going to need something that is four by... Uh, four by four and then score it a quarter of an inch on three sides and then fold it in okay but again you can go bigger I'm just using these ones because they were in the kit but there's no reason why you can't go longer um, but like I said you know this is the the main part of this tutorial really is showing you how to put the album together when it comes to the pages there is so much great inspiration out there on YouTube and this one I'm keeping quite simple because I'm using the stuff from this kit however you know yeah these can take a long, long time to make, so be prepared. This is not something that you're just going to do in a couple of hours, not if you want to get something like this, a real meaty project. Some of these can take weeks to make. So I will be back again when I've done more.
Okay, so I'm going to show you how i done that little bit of foiling, but I'm also going to talk you through other bits that I've done. I'm going to finish the video with this now, purely because um, for me to finish it, I need to add the photos to a few bits and pieces, and like I said, I don't want to give that away. This has taken me now almost two full days. Um, it's labour intensive. I have really gone to town with it and done so much to it. Um, and I still feel, feel like I want to add more. Um, just to show you other things I'm going to be doing, I've got these here. Basically, I'm going to be putting a picture of the person in here, and then you put this over the top, and you can still see the image through it. And this is going to hang along the side here with, a, with other little charms. So that's going to hang down the side here along with something else, which again, in months to come, you will eventually see that. I'm going to be posting obviously the pictures of how it is now onto my blog um, and to the YouTube video, but the, the personal bits I will share again with you later in the year. Um, so I talked you through that piece there. I have done a mat for this one, and again, I've used the foiling there. So that's all ready for a picture to go in. And I need to add the pictures, because once I add the pictures, you can then add more embellishments around that as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's, I can only go so far with you in the tutorial. For me, personally, once I then start adding the pictures, and plus I don't really want to share all those pictures um, to the whole world. <laughs> So, uh, and that's the mat there that I showed you. So again, more pictures. I may well put foiling on this. I think over the next coming months, I'm gonna add foil to everything. So um, yeah, completely over the top. These I've got to have pictures on. I need to do the backs still, but I have put sweets along here. And then I've got these two where I can write some little journaling on. They've all been foiled. You can see there, they've got a lovely shine to them. And then they're all ready for pictures to go on the back and they sit in there. Then I have this one here, which I've done the foiling on, and I've put a little gemstone there as well. You can see it all shimmering. And again, these are ready for photos, but they need some foil. This one here I have, where's my mat? It was drying. I've got this mat here, but again, it needs foiling to go on it, but that sits in like so. There's another pocket here as well. I ripped it, so I need to redo that, but it'll be another little, um, uh, photo mat there as well so again that just needs a little bit more done to it I'm going to leave it out in case it's still drying then I have done this one here I love it needs some foil added but it's two pockets that I've covered with leaves and butterflies and then again here so they're ready for photos or just some nice little I plan on writing um, some little stories of just memories as well in these again all these but every single page has a large mat in it so that's for my big photos then this one here I've got I'm not so keen on this mat I'm going to move it to a different page and recreate and do another one there but again that's just that pocket with smile um, again probably need some foil this one's really cool I've added two distressed doilies and again I need to make a picture mat to sit in this little tuck spot here that I've done with this and again it's got the foil you can just see it there again another big mat on the side and then this one is the same with those two little, um, but I've got all these that are all gonna have photos in them and they all have to have foiling put on them. And then I've got these two pages at the back because again, the idea I've got for these, I need to put the photos in. So, um, but there are tons and tons of places online um, for this to get more inspiration. But this back piece I need to foil, and I'm gonna show you how I do it here. And then again, I've got a piece that's going over this bit here for me to kind of, conclude and do another nice little story that I'm going to write here as well. So I'm just using tacky glue, I'm using the Tombow and basically I want to go down the spine. This is, I have gone through so much glue. So just really look, there is no, you do not want to be just randomly like that and then spread it out. And this stuff, if you use Tombow, you will know it's pretty instant in terms of it going tacky. So just, I don't really want it on my gold bit there, but just let it kind of just set for a minute and it will go clear. Once it's clear, then it's tacky and it is ready to pop the foil on. Okay, I don't know, can you see there where it's all gone clear? So that's really tacky now. So this is the messy bit. Honestly, there is so much mess. There is gold flakes everywhere. 
Um, so the Hoover, that's another reason why I want to get this gold stuff done and then I can get rid of it. Now I don't usually dump this much out but I'm laying it here just so I can pick up the bigger sheets and then the rest I can pop back in again. But try and get some big sheets if you can and just lay them down over the glue and they will obviously attach and just get as much coverage as you can. Take this one down here. You just want to go around and do that on all the glue. Okay, so I've just popped the excess back in. I'm just going to get rid of that there. So that's what I've got all these flaky bits. Now just go around with your finger and just rub over. And by rubbing it, you will make sure it goes into all of the um, glue. And if you feel you've missed some, you can just put some back over. But it will just break down into very, very small pieces. So I'm just literally going all that. And I can feel where the glue is and I can just bring in more if I need to. But by rubbing it around, like I said, you do move it into the glued areas. So the, the aim is to cover all the glue, to not have any sticky bits left. And it, it does dry completely. It does cover it all completely, sorry, so it leaves it completely um, smooth, nothing sticky. And if it's not got glue, it will just come away from it. So that's what gives this really cool effect and this really fun frame. So that's that. And then I've just got this. This is my, fo my um, uh, when I do my um, gold uh, foiling flakes, whatever you want to call it. This is what I use. And just go over. And again, this will also kind of embed the flakes um, and just take off the top layer. Can you see what I mean? All these bits have been going everywhere. I need one of those little desk hoovers so I can just have it like on now so it's literally sucking up everything. So now look at that beautiful frame that I've got around my back page and then that is all ready now for me to mat over the top. It's a little bit, it reminds me of a fairy tale book. Um, you know, once upon a time, you can, I can imagine this. Maybe that's what I should put at the beginning. So, that is, there's literally, you just keep doing it until there's nothing coming off. So I can see now, I've got no bits. That is completely smooth. If I just bring that up, you can see how cool does that look. Now, look how fat my book is already. Now, I don't plan to make a um, fastening for this. If I do, I will share that later on in the year. But I would just say, if you do want to do it, and there are some beautiful ways to fasten your mini albums, then just check out the links of the people that I watch, because they all do um, do them. Um, alternatively, you can hole punch, which is what I might do, is hole punch, then use one of my eyelets on the front and the back and tie it with a nice big ribbon. Um, so I've got a big bow there. Or I may well use a key charm and then clip it onto the front here. There are so many different options, but those kind of things, I think I'm just gonna see how much more fatter it gets. It's got all the pictures to go in. Once all the pictures are in, if it is then really starting to, those ones I need to look at a different way of popping them in because they are sideways, but I think once it's squashed in it, it'll be okay. Um, uh, what was I saying about, yeah, if it does end up really kind of like being like this, then I'm gonna have to um, look at putting a, a, a fastening on it. But I will update that and maybe add a little bit onto the video um, if I do decide to. But so there you have it. So if you've enjoyed today's tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.